Hey, profs. Welcome on in. My name's Rob Lightfoot, proud two-time alum of Rick Edelman College of Communication, class of 2000-2001. This is Beyond the Brown and Gold. I'm Jessica Kennedy. I'm the co-host here, also a two-time proud Rowan alum, class of 2008 from the Rick Edelman College of Communication and Creative Arts, and 2015 from the College of Education. Thanks so much for joining us today. Rowan Radio 89.7 WGLS-FM presents Beyond the Brown and Gold, a show that highlights the lives and memories of Glassboro State and Rowan University alumni. Now, here are your hosts, Rob Lightfoot and Jessica Kennedy. Today on Beyond the Brown and Gold, we have such a fun alum, Karen Mazer. And can we just say we geeked out a little bit because... You know, she was in our world, Jess. Yeah, she was in our world. She walked the studio walls. Not these studio walls. No, different studios. They have changed, but there was a lot of fun reminiscing with her about what WGLS looked like, you know, a few years back. She's a 1979 grad from, from the communications department, and she's doing... Super incredible things now. You might have heard of some shows she's written yeah, what, for. What, small shows like ER. Yeah, Remember that. Criminal Minds. Yeah. Like, no big deal. She, but really a big deal. She's a very creative mind. Very fun to talk yes. to. And has a lot of great advice for students trying to pursue that artistic area of creative writing. Enjoy. Well, Karen, welcome home. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Yeah, so you are a WGLS alum, and we were just kind of touring the studios with you. How does it differ from what it was like when when you were here as a student? Well, first of all, different location. It was in the bottom of Savitt's uh, building, and not a lot of security. Like, it's locked, and you (laughs) just could walk in, and we were just talking how it's overnight. There's nobody here. It's, you know, automated, and we had 24 hours, I think a little too much party and was probably going on at night. So um, it's it's just so professional looking. I mean, we had really great studios and I was there when it went stereo and we had you know beautiful uh, studios then too and equipment, but a lot is different. Like we're in this room now with Real to Real um, and we use those, it's like a little antique shop over here with the gives you know, it a little radio. flair though yes. it gives it so it lets you know yeah. it's a radio yeah station. it makes you right. feel at home but it's like don't touch it because it doesn't right. work and we can't fix it <laughs> <laughs> and the uh you still have the same turntables but they're kind of hidden i don't know how many people use those but we always had those out and use those uh you don't use any um like carts carts anymore no, no racing carts. the car bulk erase the carts oh there they are we still have those as well and, and on display this is like a little museum now that karen mentions it yeah it is true i don't think i used carts at all in my time here wait a minute no did i <laughs> yeah, i probably you, avoided you did, it you at, did. at all costs yeah you did i, I like that you still nervous. have the, the the albums though yes i'm sure i played a lot of those but you were saying that nobody really plays the albums anymore except for the specialty show. I think it's nerve-wracking to play an album because you have to get it right perfectly on that line. But that's the fun. And then you talk, you know, yeah. you, you post it to the time. Yeah. So talk to so, us about the shows you did when you were here. First, I was in the news team. Okay. Uh, you know, I did. I was a news reporter. And then we did uh, Morning News, which was a program just for a semester. It was from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. daily three-hour news and sports show. So imagine getting up and having, yeah, I lived in Laurel Hall and having to run across 322 at like four o'clock in the morning Uh to, you know, get the news going. So that was a lot of fun. And then I was a DJ. um, But at that time, I know you don't have to do it now, but I had to go get my third class radio operator license, taking this huge technical test out in Philly. Uh, to get my license to be, and you had to tack it up in the studio while, you know, so that you could be a DJ. Um, And I did mostly like 9 a.m. to 12, you know, in between classes, 9 to 12, the 3 to 6, things like that. But then you were just hung out at the station the whole entire time. Oh, anyway. yeah, absolutely. Before class, after class, at night, that's where you hung out. We get that a lot. We've had a, a few uh, previous station members on here, and we get that this is. And I think it's kind of unique to the station. There's not a lot of places on campus where people with like a common interest can get together and yeah. stay and hang out. So I think that's something that's really unique that the station offers for its students and then its alums can kind of come back and, and relive the space too. So that's really a cool thing. I like the lobby. You have all those photographs, the collages of the different years and I saw my year and I mm-hmm. saw my face on that. So that's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, they've run out of wall space. They can't even do the that's more why recent the TV's places. up there now. So they yeah, that up there. some digital images. So did you want to do news or- or do you want to do me? What was what was your like passion for for back then? 
Well, I was a journalism major, so I wanted to be like Lois Lane on The Daily Planet with uh, Jimmy Olsen and Superman as my boyfriend. (laughs) (laughs) Who wouldn't want that? And calling somebody chief. So I really wanted to be, uh, you know, a journalist, a newspaper journalist. And I did have uh, one of my years, I did have an internship at the Gloucester County Times, which I know merged with some other papers. And now it's part of the South Jersey News, I think. But I had an internship there. I was on The Wit I was a reporter, was a production editor on The Wit. So my whole being was news. I just loved news. And then I got interested in the radio station and DJing, and that was a lot of fun. So from print, oh, I really like radio news. And that was my passion while I was here. Again, hanging out. Most of my friends were, you know, in the the radio world. Uh, boyfriends met here at the radio station, which I know that happened with. Yes, I met my prof sweetheart here. Yeah. Married, yeah. just married 10 years. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, but it was such a great time. Uh, you know, I come back here and I just have these great memories of everything that, you know, I still listen to uh, WGLS in California. Uh, okay, let's just put it out there. Karen came from California. To, to do this. To do this. We can't get some people to come from Pittman <laughs> yeah. to do this. But California. Yeah, we she's it. made her way. So so let's rewind. So you were super involved. Uh, you were in the radio station. You were part of the WIT. What brought you to Rowan? How did you know about Rowan? What, what brought you here? Was it a place you always knew about? Didn't know anything about it. And I wanted a journalism degree. So, um, you know, Rutgers had uh, journalism, but I would have to go to the Newark campus. And that was something I didn't want to do. Got accepted in other places, Seton Hall. I was trying to stay in New Jersey, but a little someplace I could uh, live away from home, but still be closer to home. I didn't want to go hours and hours away. Um, And I came down here with my parents and had a tour of the campus with um, admissions director at the time. I think it was Jack Davies. And it was a beautiful day, and he was wonderful, and just walked around the campus, and I said to my parents, this is where I want to go. Mm. And they had a journalism degree, uh, classes that I wanted to take. So that was, that tour did it, and coming down here, and if you haven't been to Glassboro and the campus, you should come down here. When was the last time you were, were back on campus? Uh, you just asked me that before, and I was trying to think. I think it was 2014. I got inducted into the WGLS um, Hall of Fame, which was a very proud moment for me. Um, So I think it was 2014, and then, you know, COVID, I wasn't about to flying back. So I think it's uh, that time. And there's a lot that's changed since then. I think you're going to be getting a a little tour later on, but there's so so many changes. I know. I, I get the updates and mailings and things. I can't believe the campus has grown so much, not only with the the classes and everything but the the buildings it's yeah they're still the old but there's the beautiful new also like oh look at that engineering building and i know there's the whole medical center other places it's just just amazing or even just the shops on rowan boulevard i know it's like when i was here there was and it's not there anymore i really wanted a cheesesteak from Super Sub, but it's not there anymore. Oh, it's anymore. not there anymore. That was here. That was a, a regular stop of mine. It was right by the Triad, and it was this, that's where you would go. There was about that, and that was about the only play or the dining hall. And I went in last night. Well, I came down last yesterday, stayed overnight, and, you know, in the rain, I was like, I don't care. I'm just going to the student center. I don't think I could pass for a co-ed these days. But I went <laughs> into the uh, food court. I was like, a food court? Jersey Mike's, look at all this place. Like, it just was cafeteria food back in the day. It was great. It was just great to walk around and 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 just the plans for what's going to happen to the student center. I know. That's really, we're pretty excited about that yes. as well. We'll hope that be a nice quick turnaround. I'm sure it's going to take a while, but the Agora project that connects, if you don't know, the student center to the library. So there'll be some additional space on campus for students to connect, which I'm I'm looking forward to see that completion and how that kind of connects those two important pieces of yeah, campus. It's just beautiful. It's just really, it's just mind boggling how much it has expanded. So let's stay back in the day. Jess and I are both radio station alums and alums ourselves of the university favorite gsc or even radio station memory i would love to hear so our radio station memories my favorite was we got it was a big snowstorm coming we had a huge production to do and uh my buddy who happens to now be the station manager and i (laughs) had to finish this project beforehand so we had to sleep overnight in this major snowstorm back in it was going into 2000 so just one of my favorite highlights. Jess, I'm sure you have one too. You know, I have a terrible memory. What? So I, yeah, it's a, this is a bad question for me. My memory is just 
potatoes. I don't know. It's ter- mashed potatoes. But I would say I don't know if I have like can really pinpoint one. I mean, I do remember meeting Brian. I remember meeting him in Derek's office um, and them introducing. I think maybe Pat Moynihan introduced us. Okay. I'll give him a little shout out. Um, and they set us up for training. So I do remember that. So I guess, uh, you know, by default, that should really be my favorite memory. Right. Yeah, meeting really my husband. Him under bus in a couple episodes now. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, he's fine. He can handle it. Um, but I just feel like this place is so special i felt like every day we we were here and making memories and just hanging out and i was telling karen that we still have some close friends and she was saying so any memory that sticks out for you project santa Hmm. and i think it turned into a holiday helper but project santa back in the day was like four days of 24 hour radiothon in the student ballroom in the student center um raising money for gloucester county um, families in need, people in need. Um, that was so much fun of keeping that going, getting like an hour of sleep a day, trying to fit in your classes in between that. But raising the money, coming up with fun things to do, getting all the students excited. I think that was probably one of the highlights that uh, of my time here. Also, even though I had to get up early, doing the morning news was a lot of fun. Uh, learned a lot from doing that too. Uh, and just, again, hanging out with everybody here was a lot of fun whether it's and then just the the cast of characters that came through here uh, <laughs> it really is a cast of it characters, is. I cast of characters. Mm-hmm. you still just, keep in touch with those folks you know some people from the radio station i was telling jessica that i'm still friends with all my college roommates and my dorm mates and in mm-hmm. fact when i drove down here yesterday i had lunch with one of my college roommates so i mean just the memories that you make here yeah i made here at glassboro people you know at rowan it's like the friends that you have now, I hope that you keep them for the rest of your life. I mean, we still all get together and, you know, we were the Laurel Hall lovelies, <laughs> as we called ourselves. I love um, that. You know, we had such fun the first freshman year that we said, we're coming back to Laurel Hall. Let's live here sophomore year, which we did. It was just, it was just something we did. So it was, I had my group of friends from roommates and then my group of friends from Rowan and um, the radio station and... Um, yeah, it's still in touch with like old boyfriends <laughs> that I met here. It's just you're still friends. You do you want to name connection. them? We need listeners. So do you want to? No, I'm just kidding. Can we call I'm them? Just call them out by I'll name. Call them. Yeah. Graduation year, yes. major, <laughs> where they live. Yeah, we'll find out where they are now. <laughs> right. Was there any pivotal moment that you can recall of your time, not just at the station, but at Rowan in general, that really, or Glassboro State, that really kind of changed your trajectory, and a, a, maybe a moment that clicked, a mentor, or something that really made you consider the fabulous career that you have now did you ever consider that you would be writing for shows like er and what did you think what did you think you were going to do when you were here i thought i was going to be doing radio well first i was going to be a newspaper and then when i got into row and uh radio it it was going to be radio i wanted to get in radio and that's what i did um in fact my first job out of college was in new york city at rko radio networks i was a desk assistant entry level and the reason i found out about that job was because of a friend from glassboro was working there called me up and said hey they're looking for there's entry level this is a brand new uh radio network from the ground up that's how i would have never known about that job unless it was for my friend that i met here at school um, so I, that was that was a pivotal moment. Having worked here at the radio station made me want to be in radio, which then led me to television, which then led me to California and writing for television. So I never saw that in my future here. So, um, you know, back then there were no, I know that you have screenwriting classes now, and I just saw the, the sign for the Diana King uh, MA in television and yeah. I was like oh, I wish I had that when I was here I would right? never have left. Did you do um, a lot of creative writing because you were so interested in news and, and journalism and I it's interesting to me that you turned a journalism major into kind of like a creative, creative writer, writing yeah. different than a journalistic style writing so how did that really how did you get I there? I had a creative writing class in fact you're talking about people from the past I just had lunch with a former professor Mike uh, Desolitz who um, was a creative writing professor here, and I had his class, I took his class then, um, and he taught uh, classes about movies and things like that too. But again, I never envisioned myself, never thought that I was gonna be doing that, it just was always gonna be news and journalism, uh, radio news. To answer your question, the create, I think writing, whether it's news or whatever, can take you a lot of places. 
um, into business or finance or you know psychology or whatever you want to do. But I think having good writing skills really, really will help you. Like you've written for a variety of shows. Just tell us a couple of those shows, but then tell us like how do you wrap your head around getting into character, like changing your mindset for each show, honestly, because they're different genres, right? right. Like one is could be is a medical drama, but then next thing you know, you're shifting off to a comedy. So completely right. different. Or, or killing people. Or yeah. killing people. And that was yeah, a, which was your favorite? Yeah, which, yeah. Yes. yeah which is your, what's your preference? <laughs> yeah. I like drama, but I like dramedies. I really like humor. Anything with dark humor is great. I, you mentioned medical. I did work, um, when I moved to California, my first job was on ER. Can I just ask, how do you get, how does that happen? Because oh, we skipped like, like the most, LinkedIn. yeah, we like skipped to the most important piece. Like, how do you go from like, you're on the East Coast, you're working at ABC, and then it's like, oh, I'm just writing for ER, which was a huge, I used to, I remember like laying on my mom's bedroom floor watching ER. So like, how did this, how does that happen? Okay, let's go. Yeah, <laughs> let's yeah, go yeah, back. The way back machine. So after school, it was RKO, then WOR, uh, started working for ABC radio. Uh, went to New York Magazine, wasn't happy, uh, started doing some freelance, got the job at ABC Television Network. It was there for a long time, but that was corporate communications. And um, Disney was coming in, and I was like, you know what? I really love television. It's either now or never. I don't woulda, coulda, shoulda. Let me take this um, leap of faith in myself. And I took an entry-level job on a um, pilot for a Fox pilot that was gonna be at night and was being shot at uh, Kaufman Astoria Studios in Queens. The pilot didn't go anywhere, but in that same building was the Cosby program, not the Cosby show, yep. which was the Huxables. This was another show he had, just called Cosby, of course. I remember, name. I watched it actually. It still had Felicia Rashad, but it had Madeline Kahn, Dougie Doug, it was on CBS. So I took, that was the days when you had a paper resume and I went downstairs and gave, you know, this pilot I was working on was ending and I went downstairs and they actually needed somebody and I got a job as their script coordinator, which um, is proofing scripts, looking for typos, you know, making sure the format's correct, you're looking for continuity things, getting it published, getting it out to the actors and to the, to the staff and the crew. Um, and of course they're like, well, you know how to use this, um, Word, this program, it's a, a it, not, it's not even a word program, it's for script, script writing. I forgot the name of it because they don't use it anymore. But they're like, you know how to use that. I didn't know how to use it. But you know what? You'd say, well, of course I know how to. Yes, yeah. of course. And then you go learn it. Just so you, I want not to tell people to lie. No, but yeah. you just, I was, I'm the worst. I would have been like, I don't know how to use that. Yeah, Sorry. Say, you know, <laughs> your way. <laughs> If you went to Rowan, if you went to Glassboro, you're a smart person. Mm -hmm. You could learn anything. So, of course, you can learn. So I got the program and just learned it myself. So I was a script coordinator on Cosby, um, and it lasted four years. And the last year of the show, I got to write an episode, which was very exciting to get laughs for Bill Cosby at the time. Um, that's when he was America's Favorite Dad. Um, but after it was over, there was nothing happening in New York, and everybody said, you have to go out to California. And I had been there for ABC, and I knew California, and I only had one friend out there who said you could come out and sleep on my couch. So I It's always a couch. It's always a couch. It's always a friend with a couch. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I could have stayed in New York because I got offered, I'm a big fire buff, and I got offered a job from the fire department, FDNY, and I really had to make a decision. Do I go to California or do I stay in New York? And I was afraid, like, what should I do? And I remember, it still kills me to this day, when I was at Glassboro, I got accepted to go a semester abroad to England. And I backed out because of a boy. Mm. Mm. It's always a don't boy. Back there's out. always a couch, always there's always a boy. Don't back out for a boy or a girl or mm. anything, because I was like, I'm gonna be gone for three months. Nobody's, I'm gonna miss all the fun and nobody's gonna remember, it's three months out of your entire year. So I didn't go. So I said, I can't do that this year, uh, this time. I have to go to California because if it doesn't work, I could always come back home. And so I left, the Cosby show was over and uh, went out to California and just started sending my resumes around, like what shows would I like to work on? Oh, ER, you know, that's good, this show, this show. And I got an offer to do the script, be the script coordinator on ER. And the reason why I got the job the woman who was looking at my resume saw that I had worked on Cosby, and it was produced by this company, Carsey Warner, and she's like, well, if anybody could work on that company, 
she'll do fine here. So it was, I didn't know anybody. Everybody was surprised, like, who did you know to get on the show? I was like, I didn't know anybody. I just sent a resume in, just luck. Yeah. Luck, fate, whatever you want to call it. Um, Meant to be. So I got the job on uh, ER. Like, how do you come up with that creativity? To, like, because I'd be nervous as all get out. Yeah, like, like wouldn't well, you be like you... going into a room and be like, on this new writer on the show like how do you what's inspiring that creativity for that? well I wasn't a writer at first so I was the script coordinator researcher and then I got a freelance on the show and then they put me on the staff so you're reading the scripts you're learning the voice that's the whole thing is you learn the voices of the character what's the tone of the show um, and you just do your work you study the the past shows I didn't join till season seven the show was on for 15 years, so I had seven years of learning the show and learning the characters. Um, for the medical part, we had doctors working on the I show. I was going to ask that. Like, yeah, what, I think how, about how that when it? I watch Grey's Anatomy now. I'm like, oh, they, this, somebody's got to be oh, in yeah. there just teaching people the medical savvy stuff. And even the even the, the programs like they use, the different technology they use, like some companies got to be paying big money to have their technology in Grey's Anatomy. Is that kind of how kind of how it yeah, works? There's companies that have, you know, pr- for props. It's on ER. All that, all the what you saw, the machines and, and the instruments, it was all real. It was real things. It, it looked like a real hospital. Um, so with the medical, you had doctors on staff so that you could say, listen, I want to give this person a heart attack. What, and then what medicines <laughs> do you use? Oh, again? And, uh, you know, or, you know. But Often good, you don't want to give people no. a heart attack. But the good thing about ER was I could do comedy on ER. Because even though you were killing a kid in exam room two or trauma three or somebody went up to the OR in a car accident, you could still have the comic runner throughout with the nurses or the doctors or what was happening at the front desk. So do you, do you guys pitch these ideas? Like, were you pitching the idea of like, hey, this week's storyline should be this, and then you're with other writers that are like complimenting your work or are you all pitching different scenes that are coming through you're in a room uh the writer's room with depends on how many could be seven to ten different writers and of all different uh experience levels um and of course whatever happened if it's a serialized show what happened in the previous episode that you have to continue is there a romance is there a mystery or something um and then you i would on er come in and and pitch some ideas that i had for a show uh for an episode and people would then pitch on top of that. You know, it's always great to have other ideas. I think a writer's room makes you a better writer because sure. people come up with different ideas. It's like the ultimate group project. Like, could you imagine you're coming in a room with like 10 other people that are trying to do maybe the same thing that you are? That I think that would be intimidating. Was it intimidating? No, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. It was even though it was, a you know... Medical stuff, life and death. We had a lot of laughs. It was a lot of laughs. Karen's like, I got a heart attack. No, no, I can top that. (laughs) This week, George is going to do this. Oh, wacky, wacky. Well, I didn't get to work with George Clooney, unfortunately. Uh, But was he off by then? He was gone by season five, I think. Um, But he would be, you know, shooting movies and come onto the lot. And I was telling Jessica that it'd be like somebody would say, "Hey, Clooney's on the lot." You would get onto the golf cart and go around the Warner Brothers studio <laughs> lot looking for George Clooney. Um, I always got hit by the uh, by uh, Clint Eastwood's car one time. That was fun. <laughs> that, that's <laughs> a good lot. story to yeah. tell you. Um, but it was kind of my fault. I was in the way. Sorry, Clint. Is it more difficult now that there's more platforms like uh, – to for job opportunities is it easier now to find a writing position than it was before because there are so many platforms creating their own content or is it pretty much the same it's the same better and more difficult i mean because there are so many platforms so many shows um, but a lot of the rooms are smaller so you won't have 10 people together that maybe you'll have four or the showrunner writes every single episode and does it all themselves wow um so sometimes it's difficult and you know there's a lot of people out there looking for a job and there's so many talented people who need a job and haven't been able to to find one um so it just depends on what you're looking for are you looking for streaming versus broadcast versus cable and for you do you have a preference and any of those? Um, no, I just like writing really good shows. I did ER, and then after that went to, you know, that's medical procedural, hybrid uh, procedural, character-driven. And then I went to Army Wives, which was, if you want to say soap, I don't think that's a bad word, serialized um, drama. 
Um, it's funny, uh, Sterling K. Brown was on that show as the lone man that hung out with the group of women of Kim Delaney and Catherine Bell and others. Um, and then he just blew up with, with This Is this Us. Is wow, us he's so good. The OJ trial. We all obviously leave our regular jobs and go home and we, we watch TV. Mm-hmm. You're in TV and in that space. So what are you going home and you're not watching any TV? You can be honest. No, I'm watching everything. Okay, okay. I love television and, and shows. Um, it's funny because sometimes it's like, oh, I know who the murderer is or I know what they're going to say. Um, and my boyfriend will be like, <laughs> I'll like say the next line that's going to come out of the person's mouth. And just he just looks at me like, stop. <laughs> <laughs> you know it because Ruining you wrote it for plot. so long? Or? No, well, I just know what the next line is probably going to be. Yeah. Not to say anything that's bad, but it's just, oh, this is what I would say. And right. I'm happy when it is that line. It's like, oh, good. I could write for that show. Yeah. That's exciting. I didn't really think about it from what, that perspective. Yeah, what are you watching right now? Oh, I, I know we didn't write that. it down. I know, I you know. You ask me that. So you um, don't want to know what I'm watching. I watch terrible TV, so mm. I watch a lot. You would be offended. I watch a lot of bad reality TV. No, I don't watch it. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> the only thing is I watch uh, HGTV a lot for okay. the house house shows. My boyfriend calls it house porn. Yeah. Because that's what I watch. <laughs> uh-huh. It's just all those shows. The Walking Dead, that's finally ending but the walking dead i just you know we just discovered um welcome to wrexham oh um, that's such a great program yeah yeah, yeah. my husband's watching that yeah heartwarming and wonderful yes. i really love that and of course you know it makes you think of ted lasso yes well i think the relationship piece right so because of the relationships you had here you heard about your first job and then even as you progress through your career it's really the relationships that you're making while you're you're writing and you're on set that you can kind of bring those pieces to the to the next one so i think it's an important message to kind of like build relationships invest time in people and bring other people up with you if you can exactly and they're bringing other uh, people up with you i like to mentor younger writers or other people or even students have reached out to me and i i talk to them about careers and what they can do um that's important and it's just not your roommates or somebody in your major try to find other people to there's all different kind of people out there and you should be friends with or or make acquaintance with as many people as you can, whether it's, you know, go talk to your advisors and your teachers, but join a club. That's another thing or an activity. I know it's hard for a lot of kids um, going to school and if they're working a job or two jobs or commuting. I mean, that's, you know, yeah. I had it easy because I uh, was housed here, you know, at Glassboro. I lived here. My parents were able to afford to send me here. I mean, I had part time jobs and things, but I, it wasn't like I had to really struggle to. Um, and didn't have to commute. So I know that there's some struggles out there for for people. Um, But if you can get involved and meet people and just keep your eyes open, it's just, and and expand your focus. When I was here and it was just journalism, journalism, I wish I had taken French, I had taken an astronomy course, but I think I would have taken more psychology and sociology Mm -hmm. and a drama and maybe theater and took a uh, music Clark, but I would have expanded my palette while I was here. Well, we appreciate you coming to South Jersey to visit us and to sh- share your story with us because oh, it's anytime. really such a cool success story, and Love we're very proud here. of everything that, and that you're doing. And what time is it? I think my shift starts soon. I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, going to yeah. hop on air? You're on air next. i got to yeah. pull my records to, to play. <laughs> awesome. Well, Karen, thanks so much for coming. Thanks, Karen. Enjoy Thank the rest so of your much. day. Okay, so I would really like to take Karen home with me. Okay. <laughs> let, let's let the family know before uh, you do I that. know. I think they would be okay with it. I think there's nothing better than a, like a person that's from the East Coast that goes and lives in California because I think they have the best of East Coast and West Coast in them, and they make this like perfect mix of a chill but real person. Yes. Do you know a lot yeah, of the yeah, East Coast? Let's be honest. The, the West Coast, some people can be a little fake out there. Yeah, yeah, but very relaxed. Like, yeah. they're just in no rush to do anything, and it's a good mix with the East Coast where we're, like, a little chaotic and crazy. Yeah. So she's, like, the best of both worlds, and I just love that personality. I'm still trying to figure out how she wraps her minds in, like, the different shows that she wrote for. I know. She you know said I mean? it so easily. Like, we're just going to kill a kid. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, wow. That's the script, by the way. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. fake. It was all fake, yeah, right? What for sure. But fake? I was just like, wow, that, that's that got to be, like, really hard on your mental. I guess it was. She had nightmares yeah. for, for a month. But she was really fun to talk to. I mean, it's not every day you get to talk to somebody that's out in California writing for some of these hit TV shows that we all know so well and we love reminiscing about wgls let's be honest right i know we have a special affinity to this place it's probably, probably a bad place we're, we're probably having 
some issues with that. <laughs> like we should go to therapy and yeah, talk about how much so. we love WGLS yeah, and no. is it a problem? It's too much. No, that's okay. I think it's a big, it was a big part of her life and obviously pivotal for her. Um, and it's just, it's nice to be able to hear how those experiences kind of led her to where, where she is now. Yeah, and she came back to see us. Well, she came back to see the campus. Yeah, she wasn't really But we us, were but... like a bonus? Were we a bonus? I think so. Okay. I think she, I mean, she got my number when she left, so maybe she will come home with that's me. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to think you're too special. She took my number. Too, oh, man. That. Maybe she'll come home with you. I don't know. She was so great. But we had a wonderful time yeah, chatting with time her. With so we hope you enjoyed the show just as much as Rob and I did. You've been listening to Beyond the Brown and Gold on Rowan Radio 89.7 WGLS FM. You can find more episodes on your favorite podcasting platforms by searching for Beyond the Brown and Gold or Rowan Radio On Demand. Thank you.